and uh, yeah. make sure we get everything situated there. And also, don't forget the photo booth. There, I can guarantee you, a lot of work went into that in a very short amount of time. I appreciate um, all the Sister Brooke did to get that ready. This is for you, so you can make memories. I mean, <coughs> one thing we did at um, Camp Inc. this week is we remembered our um, brothers and sisters who have gone home to be with the Lord, who have served the Lord so faithfully over the years, and one that we were, that they remembered was Sister Brian, and um, we just want to acknowledge all the hard work that she and Brother Brian put in for the kingdom of God. And just like that, I'd like to appreciate He's a spiritual father. Paul said, "You have not many fathers in Christ Jesus." Now I want to talk to you this morning, continuing our theme on the subject of being wonderfully and fearfully made. I want to preach to you a different type of message, if I can. Wonderfully made fathers. Wonderfully made fathers. If you have your Bible, please, I'd like to stand with you, please, out of respect for the Word of God. And turn with me to Luke chapter 1, verse 17. Luke chapter 1, verse 17. The Word of God says this. And he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Listen to it again. And he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, and to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Join me in prayer, please. Father, we come to you right now. We thank you for the Lord. 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 We for all that's accomplished in Jesus' holy name, we pray. Amen. 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 As I always tell you, neighbor, it's good to see me in God's house today. Hallelujah. Wonderfully made fathers is a phrase you probably haven't heard in a long time. Maybe you've never heard it. And in the day and age that we're living in, fathers are often ridiculed. Masculinity is ridiculed and looked down upon. And they are telling men that they need to be more effeminate. They need to act more like women. They need that women need to act more like <coughs> men. Our society is confused. We saw a brief revival of masculinity and godly masculinity in the 80s under ministries like Edwin Lewis told with maximized manhood. And then we saw the promise keeper try to rise uh, Raise men up to being what God has called them to be. Uh, men, can I remind you this morning, God has a purpose for you. God has a plan for you. It is not by accident that you are male. It's not by accident that you are a father. It's not by accident that you are where you are right now in your life. In Luke chapter 1 verse 17, we read these words about John the Baptist who was a man of purpose, a man on a mission, and you might say John never had children. John was a prophet. He was in the, in the wilderness preaching, uh, calling people to repentance, calling them back to obey the law, calling them to do what God's word said, do, and he was preparing the way of Jesus Christ. But notice what it says about this man. That as far as we know, he never had any children. He was never married. He would eventually be beheaded because he called out a king for uh, engaging in an improper marriage. Notice what it says here, though. He shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias. How many of you know that's the power of the Holy Ghost? We need men in the 21st century who are saved sanctify and filled with the Holy Ghost. Who are not afraid to let the Spirit of God unction them and move in their lives. They're not afraid 
afraid to speak in tongues and prophesy and call sin, sin. But notice what, a lot, what John the Baptist did uh, under the power and inspiration of the Holy Spirit. He turned the hearts of the fathers to the children. What a statement. I believe that we need men in this day and age to be like John the Baptist because there are so many <coughs> children who've been born and don't even know who daddy is. There are so many children that have been born that the daddies have left the home and forsaken and beloved. We need to have a revival where, our heart, where daddies get concerned about their children's futures. Amen. Where daddies get concerned about where their children are going to spend eternity. Where daddies get concerned and burn the midnight oil in prayer. Where daddies get concerned and come to the house of the Lord. We are the priests of our home, gentlemen. God's going to hold us accountable for what goes on. God's going to hold us accountable for what we do in the house of the Lord. And God's going to hold us accountable for what we allow to take place in our children's lives. Now look at what Scripture goes on and says. Uh, John the Baptist did under the power of the Holy Ghost. Not only did he cause the hearts of the fathers to turn back and be concerned about the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just. Hallelujah. You should be concerned about whether your child is living right or not. You should be concerned about what's going on in the school system. And you should be led by the Holy Spirit. And here's the third thing I want you to realize this morning, gentlemen, as we get into this message out. We should prepare our children to meet the Lord. Amen. It's all right if your child becomes a multi-millionaire. It's all right if your child becomes a doctor, a lawyer, or a good mom and daddy. We want them to, but most importantly, we want them to be with us in heaven. We want them to stand before the Lord on the day of judgment and hear the Lord say, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter into the kingdom that was prepared for you from the foundation of the world. I want to tell you something, church. If I want a million people to Jesus Christ and I lose Michaela or I lose Courtney, I failed. I want my children to be in heaven. That's my first priority. I want my wife to be in heaven with me. And I understand my responsibility. And I want to remind you fathers, you've got a responsibility. Maybe you have a a child that's being rebellious. Uh, maybe you have a family member that's being rebellious. What's your responsibility for them? Your responsibility is to pray for them, to lift them up and to love them, but do not condone their sinfulness. Do not enable it. Let's look at what scriptures call fathers to do. Is this all right this morning? Hallelujah. Amen. We're going to do it anyway. Hallelujah. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 6 verse 4. And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. What does the scripture mean to us this morning? It means that we as men are not supposed to stir our children up to anger. Now that don't mean let them do whatever they want to. That means that we are to bring them up in a way that God wants them to walk. Now let me share with you these other two words that are very important here to help you get an understanding of what it means to not provoke your children to wrath. Notice what it says here. Fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. First thing I want you to realize, how many of you know your children don't automatically understand everything? I'm a parent that don't understand everything. I'm one of them. I don't know everything. But what we need to do is realize the process of life. You've got to enjoy the process. Children are growing up too big, too quick in the day that we're living in. They're expected to be adults and they're met. Okay, yes, Lord, I'll do it. Can I tell you what? A 13-year-old, a 14-year-old, a 12-year-old has no, no business making decisions that are going to affect their bodies for the rest of their lives. Amen. Their parents need to be making those decisions. Be involved in your children's lives. Hallelujah. Don't leave it to the school system because they already lost it on their way to hell. Be involved 
by prayer, be involved by witnessing, be involved by telling your child their child of purpose, their child of destiny. But understand this, we're not to provoke them to wrath, but we are to bring them up, we are to enjoy the process, and we are to nurture them. The word nurture in the Greek means uh, the whole process of training and educating children. It's not just about feeding them and giving them a roof over their head. Hallelujah. I'm glad I got a daddy who took me fishing and who tried to take me hunting. That wasn't my thing. But he tried to bring me up. He taught me how to use a leg. He taught me how to hit a baseball bat. But more importantly, he taught me how to treat my mom by seeing him do it. That's how I know how to treat my wife, by watching my dad. Why are there so many men that don't know how to treat women? They never saw it portrayed before. Amen. Gentlemen, let your children see you treating your wife with the respect she deserves as your wife. Don't talk down to her. Don't insult her. Don't neglect her. Don't reject her. Because what they see in you is what they're going to be doing. And ladies, can I just, I know Mother's Day is past, but let me make an agnet, a, a, a addendum to my message that I preached on Mother's Day. You need to do the same thing for your husband. Always treat them in such a way that your children reverence them and respect them. And you might say, well, wait a minute, preacher. We're growing up in a different age and a different time. And our God's the same God yesterday, today, and forever. And he still values the same family unit that he started out in the beginning. It was a man and a woman, a father and a mother, and they were to be together for a lifetime. And you might have messed up in the past, but you can pick up and run with it now. And get it right now. The word nurture again means the home training and education of children, which relates to the cultivation of mind. We do it pretty good on the mind. We're very intelligent. And morals. You know who told me it was wrong to lie? My dad did. You know how he told me? When I did, he took me behind behind the building and whooped my behind. We need to understand that there is a right way and a wrong way. Gentlemen, God is expecting you to teach your children about morality. Not the church. Not society. The fathers and the grandfathers. If you're going places online that you wouldn't want your children to do, don't be surprised if you see them going there. If you're watching movies and you're listening to music and that you wouldn't want your children listening to, don't be surprised if they're doing it one day. Why? Because they follow your example. Hallelujah. Listen. Admonish means a mild rebuke or warning by bringing their attention to a wrong action. Hallelujah. Do you admonish your children? If I have to tell you no one more time, after we've already told them ten times, if I have, if we need to lead by example, but we need to build them up, let them know why it's wrong. And you might say, well, they didn't get it when I tried it. But let them keep at it. Keep at it. Hallelujah. Blessed are the fathers who are patient and who endure. And yes, sometimes we get it wrong, but we're willing to cop to it. Whenever we get it wrong, we're willing to make it right. Sometimes fathers need to hear their children say, you know what, I shouldn't have talked to you like that. I'm sorry. Sometimes the children need to hear their fathers say to their mothers, you know what, honey, I shouldn't have talked to you like that. I'm sorry. Hallelujah. Live the life. Be the examples. Colossians chapter 3, verse 21. Let's look at that. Hallelujah. I'm going to hit you kind of hard, gentlemen, but if you ride with me, I promise you'll love it by the end of the message. Notice what it says here. Colossians 3, 21. Fathers, provoke not your children to anger, lest they be discouraged. We are not to pick at our children in such a way that they give up on life. Amen. I wonder how many children are in the shape they're in because they had a baby that told them, you'll never be nothing. You'll never amount to anything. 
you're so sorry, you're negative. We need to be positive and speak life into our children and speak good things into our children. Listen, beloved, I want to tell you, we got young people in this church that can reach, do anything. That can be anything God's called them to be. We have got to be the supporters of them. We've got to be the lifters up of them. We've got to be the ones that cause them to want to serve God because we're speaking life into them and we're not speaking death. You might need to go home today if you get a chance. Maybe the Holy Spirit might convict you while I'm preaching this thing. The Holy Spirit might bring something back to your memory. And you need to go back to your son or your daughter and say, you know what, I wish I had never said that. Please forgive me. I had an instance of her. Me and Daddy went fishing one time with Mr. Chick and we were catfishing and I got a big one on the line. I think went, Whoa. That line went down and I couldn't pull him up. My dad got so excited he grabbed the fishing line from me and started reeling the fish in. He was about, he was excited to catch that fish for me. But it affected me. And years later, you know, my dad came back to me and he said, Son, if I could go over again, if that fish would have pulled you into the water, I would grab you by the heels and I would let you pull that fish in. He felt like he'd done me wrong. I forgot about it. But my daddy, it was something that was on his heart. Fathers, if you feel like you need to make something right with your child, make it right. If you feel like you need to make something right with your spouse, make it right. I appreciate my daddy for coming and telling me that. It wasn't nothing to me. I mean, you know, I, I forgot about it, but it weighed on him. If God's dealing with you about something, make it right. Be a man. Step up. Hallelujah. Now look at Hebrews chapter 12, verse 9. We are living in an age where we can't discipline our children. I've got a 20, soon to be 22-year-old and a 19-year-old, and I still look at their phones. I still ask where they've been, what they're doing, and what they can and can't do. Amen. And when they get to have children, I'm going to be the same way. Because I love them. I want to see them in heaven. And notice what it says here. Furthermore, we have fathers of our flesh which corrected us. All men say amen if your father ever corrected you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. <coughs> and notice what we are to do when they correct us. And we gave them reverence. Hallelujah. When you get ready to, when you get ready to discipline your children from now on, you're going to tell them, all right, you got to you got to respect me after I, after I spank you. you got to honor me. That involves you tell them why you discipline them, and you show them the right way afterwards. You know one of the problems we have in our in our correction system and the prison system in the United States of America today. Very seldom do we correct bad behavior; we just punish it. And that's what a lot of people do. They'll punish through getting loud with their voices. They'll punish through spankings. They'll punish through taking things. But the job is not to punish. The job is to correct. You want to stop the bad behavior before it leads too far. Now notice what it goes on and says here. Furthermore, we have had our, uh, of our flesh, which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection to the Father of spirits and live? Listen, beloved, one thing I want to encourage you and exhort you to do today, beloved, is teach your children how to obey the Holy Ghost. I started off telling you that John was somebody who operated in the power of the Holy Ghost and he was calling the hearts of the fathers back to the children. Gentlemen, if we don't operate in the power of the Holy Ghost, we're going to see a generation come up that don't know what it means uh, to operate in the power of the Holy Ghost. And it's great that the ladies do it, but gentlemen, it's all right for you to speak in tongues. Uh, it's all right for you to prophesy. It's all right for you to preach under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. It's all right for you to witness to people at work and in the business place. Hallelujah. What did God that he would stir them in up to revival? Somebody can praise the Lord on that. That's all right. Now let me give you some encouragement here. As we go forward, we got a heavy task before us, gentlemen. We need the anointing that breaks the yoke of bondage. 
We need to let our children hear us apologize when we do wrong. And we need to do right by them. But notice what John said in his Gospels, when he, in these little letters when he wrote to the believers in the first century. 1 John chapter 2, verse 13. I write unto you fathers, because you have known him that is from the beginning. I want to ask you this morning, this one simple question, gentlemen. Do you know him? Not do you know about him? Not have you felt him? But do you know him who is from the beginning? There's only one that's been here ever since time began and before, and that's God. Do you know God this morning? How do I know him? It starts when you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and you believe in your heart God raised him from the dead. And it continues from there by you get sanctified, by you being filled with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. By you confessing your sins, letting God be faithful and just to forgive you of your sins. By you reading the Bible, by you getting to know the author of the Bible through prayer, through worship, and then, hallelujah, by you being what God's called you to be. But not only did he speak to the fathers, he spoke to the young men, to the young fathers, the potential fathers. I speak unto you young men because ye have overcome the wicked one. Hallelujah. Did you realize you've already overcome the devil this morning? If you know Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, you're already on the winning side. Maybe you're stumbling, maybe you're making mistakes. But I want to share with you some scriptures that will give you hope this morning. Look what we at 1 John chapter 5 verse 4. 1 John chapter 5 verse 4. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. How many people do I have out here today who have faith in Jesus Christ? Can I see your hands? You're an overcomer. Can you just give God praise and glory? Hallelujah. You might say, preacher, I got cancer. Preacher, I got heart disease. I, preacher, I have family problems. Preacher, I, our society is in a mess. But you're going to overcome it because of your faith in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You might say, well, wait a minute. I've made a lot of mistakes in my life. Join the club. I made a lot of mistakes in my life. I'll probably make some this week. But I'm glad it's not me being perfect that causes me to be an overcomer. It's my faith in Jesus. Fathers, maybe you made some mistakes and you messed up. It's not your perfectness that makes you a good father. You keep at it. You keep working. It's your faith in Jesus Christ that's going to give you the victory now. Let's get a little bit more specific. 1 John chapter 5 verse 5 tells us this. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. Hallelujah. The most important thing you can teach your children, fathers, is to believe that Jesus is the Son of God. The most important thing you can teach them is how to be saved. They've got to confess with their mouth Jesus the Lord, believe in their heart God raised them from the dead. If they sin, if they confess their sins, He's faithful and just to forgive them of their sins and cleanse them from all unrighteousness. Teach them by example. Teach them by practice. Teach them by word. But teach them. And continue to reinforce them. Revelation chapter 3 verse 5. Hallelujah. What do I get as an overcomer? If I keep my faith in Jesus, when all the world is trying to get me to deny it, to reject it, why should I strive to keep it? He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment. Hallelujah. God's got a robe prepared for you. It's pure, it's holy, without spot, without blemish, it's perfect. And I will not blot out 
his name out of the book of life. That means this. If God's not going to blot your name out of the book of life, there are going to be those that their names are blotted out. You've got to overcome to make it. You've got to keep the faith. You've got to hold on. Notice this. And I think this is probably one of the best things I love about overcoming. But I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. Can you imagine on the day? Y'all might need to make me a space. I'm on the run. Hallelujah. Can you imagine on the day of judgment when you stand before the Lord of glory? Jesus is going to come. Come here, Brother Tim. Hallelujah. Just imagine. Jesus is going to come and he's going to say, Tim Bell, Father, this one's mine. Hallelujah. Yes. Take you by the hand. Hallelujah. And he's going to say, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter into the kingdom that was prepared for you. You might say, Preacher, I, I never preached a sermon. Preacher, I never gave millions of dollars in the offering plate. I, I wasn't, didn't even go to church every Sunday. I, there were times that I messed up. You kept believing. And then imagine this. After the Lord said to you, well done, you're an overcomer, this one's mine. Imagine him going to your, to your son or daughter, your grandchildren, calling them by name. Think this one's mine. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, fathers, but that stirs my friends. That makes me want to get in there and dig into the word more. Makes me want to pray more. Makes me want to witness more and share the gospel with my family more. Because the old song says, Will the circle be unbroken? By and by, Lord, by and by. There's a better day awaiting. In the sky, Lord, in the sky. Beloved, I don't family circle unbroken. I'm thankful I had a grandfather that was part of the singing group. Hallelujah. And they told us about Jesus. I'm thankful that I have an Uncle Harry who was a minister of the gospel and he told me about Jesus. I'm thankful I got a grandma in heaven named Beatrice Walker and one in heaven named uh, Lulu Lee. Hallelujah. They told me about Jesus. But more than that, I'm glad I got a daddy. Who told me about Jesus. And more than that. He told me about how he got saved. He said to him and my mom one day. He wanted to go out on a date. With my mom and mom said. You ain't going out on a date with me. Unless you come with me to revival. And so he went with her to a revival. And the preacher preached. And my dad said. Son I went down. I was going out to go out on a date. Went down and got saved. That's a win win. Hallelujah. And he said, I haven't always gotten it right. But I've been living for Jesus ever since. Tell your children how you got saved. Tell your children. Hallelujah. Maybe you've adopted children. Maybe you are overseeing children. Let them see your walk with Christ. That's the most precious thing you can give them. Listen. 1 John chapter 2 verse 14. 1 John chapter 2, verse 14. I have written unto you fathers because you have known him that is from the beginning. I have written unto you young men because ye are strong. How many of you have gone through some? You felt like it was just going to kill you. Anybody? You know why you went through it? God already knew you, you were going to go through it. But God just wanted to show you you're stronger than you thought you were. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. When I am weak, that's when I'm strong. This is what it says here. And the word of God abideth in you. Hallelujah. Cancer did not take the word of faith from you. Heart disease did not take the word of faith from you. Death didn't take the word of faith from you. Loss didn't take the word of faith from you. Doubt didn't take the word of faith abides in you. Hallelujah. 
and ye have overcome the wicked ones. I'm going to ask the praise team that they'll come back to the platform and we're going to get ready to go to the Lord in prayer. Hallelujah. Fathers, as they're coming, what can I remind you of concerning this message? Brother Glenn, if you'll pull that last slide up for me. Number one, fathers, are you fulfilling God's will for you as a father? Are you representing Him and His values to your family? If not, why don't you start today? You might say, Brother Lee, I don't know a lot of the Bible. That's okay. The Bible doesn't say you overcome by your Bible knowledge. You overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of your testimony. And you love not your life, even unto the death. Do you have a testimony? What's your testimony? It's not that you gave millions of dollars to the offering plate. It's not that you went around the world preaching the gospel of whatever else. Your testimony is one day you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and you believe in your heart God raised him from the dead and all your sins were washed away by that blood. One day you were sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost. Things you used to do you just don't want to do them anymore. And as you grew in your faith and love of Jesus Christ your knowledge and understanding grew. Do you have that testimony this morning? As the praise team gets ready to take us back to the throne room and song, Fathers, I want to challenge you. Why don't you let that be your testimony today? I'm going to ask every head to bow, every eye to close. Praise team, take us to the throne room of grace.
come into my heart and be the Lord of my life from this day forward. Help me to be the representative of your kingdom you want me to be to my family at work and everywhere I go. In Jesus' name. Father, I come before you right now in the name of your Son, Jesus. And I pray for every father that's in here under the sound of my voice. Those that might be watching online, Lord, I plead the blood over them and I thank you for them, Lord. They are fearfully and wonderfully made fathers. Hallelujah. It's not by accident that you've given them the spouse that they've got. It's not by accident that you've given them the children that they've got. Lord, I pray that they will take this message and hide it in their hearts. That you will fill them with the Holy Ghost, God, and let them run a spirit-filled life, Lord God. A spirit-filled race, Lord God, where they eschew, turn from evil, and do that which is pleasing to you. Help them to be your representatives, Lord. Help them to be overcomers by keeping their faith in Jesus Christ and teaching their children how to be overcomers. And Lord, we'll be ever careful to give you the praise and glory and honor for it. Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. If this has been a blessing to you, can you give the Lord a good hand clap of praise? <laughs> Hallelujah. Fathers, happy Father's Day to you. Hallelujah. <coughs> can we have all the fathers stand for just a minute with Gable? You know, we've got some might not be able to stand with you. How about that? There you go. <laughs> give them a hand, folks. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We appreciate you, men. We need you in the church. We thank God for your witness and your testimony. Hope this message is an encouragement to you to keep on with the gospel. Keep on the fire line. Don't forget, there will not be a service this evening because of it being Father's Day. I want you to spend time with your family and friends. Amen. We're going to anoint Brother Don. God's able to bring healing. Would you just join your faith with ours and stretch your faith this way? And let's believe God for our brother. Heavenly Father, we come before you right now in the name of your son, Jesus. Lord, we're going to wrestle down you too. Lord, we thank you for his faith in you. God, that it's not by might nor by power, but it's by your spirit. Lord, we ask you to touch his back right now. God, completely deliver him, Lord. We pray that you would touch his back, my Lord. You know that he's in there, God. We thank you that by the stripes of Jesus, they are healed. We thank you for sending your spirit. And bring one out the will of the touch of God. We give you some praise and glory on our part. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Love you, brother. Praise the Lord for you. Amen. Have you obeyed the Lord? Our hearts and minds clear? If so, don't forget photo booth. We would love to have pictures with you and your family. Uh, fathers, get out there and get your pictures taken. Uh, don't forget the announcements. We also have a t-shirt that's available. We're taking orders for it right now. It's our nice stand part of um, part of flag, and I kneel at the cross. You can see an example of it back there on the bulletin board. You can sign up, let us know what size you want. I think your helmet says ten. We don't know yet. So, so we'll, we'll uh, let you know that, but you can just let us know your size and what <laughs> Amen. All hearts and minds clear? Don't forget about Rock and Springs Crime Watch meeting on Tuesday night in the Fellowship Hall at 7 o'clock. Um, if you're in this area, uh, we'd love for you to come out and be with us. And also, don't forget about Laugh Line Screen. That's going to be taking place uh, on the 23rd. If all hearts and minds are clear, Brother Kasai, if you will, would you stand in this message with a word of prayer? Father God, we come before your presence today, Father. We come humbly, thanking you for being our Father, for leading, 